Hello everyone. Now let's start about the time in Python. In this video, majorly we will cover up the time module with some glimpse of date time module also. Let's begin about time module in Python. As time module is available in the standard Python library, so we can make it a direct import with this command import time. And before having understanding of different time representations in the time module, I want to talk about this very useful function in time module and this is the perf counter function. With the help of perf counter function, we can calculate how much time does an operation took to run. So let's see that how do we do that. Just note it down this time at 12 o'clock and some few microseconds I ran this perf counter function and it returned a float value. And again I ran this perf counter function and note down the time at 12 o'clock 5 seconds and few microseconds and it returned a value back. And now this is the most important part. Look at the time difference that is 5 seconds and few microseconds and the value difference which was returned by these perf counter function is the exactly same. So that's what this perf counter function does or this is a functionality of a perf counter function. So whenever you run this perf counter function second time the value returned by this perf counter function will be the exactly same when we ran the perf counter function previously and the value we got plus the time difference in seconds and microseconds then between these two perf counter function and this functionality we utilize to calculate how much time does an operation took to run in Python? Let's see that with an example. So now we have this loop, and I want to see how much time does this loop took to run. For that, what we will do, we will declare a variable start, and whatever the way, way value. This perf counter function will be returned, will be assigned to this variable. And then when this operation, I mean this loop, will get ended, again we will declare a variable and again we will assign the value to this variable, whatever will be returned by this perf counter function. What it does? So, so you see, like perf counter function keep on adding the time in second with it. So Whenever we will run this AND function, the value difference between whatever the time difference this loop took to run. So this functionality we utilize to get the time of this loop. Let's see with a practical. So instead of let's say 30 million times, I want to see just how much time it will take to run if we will run this loop with 5 million times. Let's run this loop. We could see it took about half seconds. So now let's see how much time it will take to run for 10 million times, almost double 1.2 seconds. As these times will be an approximation time and it will differ machine to machine and what operation is running in your machine and different other parameters, RAM, CPU speed, and many other parameters. But you could have a basic idea that how much whenever you run an operation, how much time does that operation took to run. And this is a very useful functionality. So with that functionality, you could figure out what ap approach you need to apply to solve a pro problem. Now there is one more function which might apply not widely, but few places that the sleep function time or sleep and it suspends that set whatever the number of seconds you would mention 
in this function called argument so let's say i'm making second so let's add these two seconds over here so whenever so before this end it will suspend the thread for two seconds and before that it took to run about 1.2 seconds now let's see how much time this will take to run it took about 3.1 seconds It, it has added those two seconds time let's make it the three second suspension it took about 4.1 seconds that's what function does it make a thread suspension whatever the number of seconds you will ma mention the function call now let's understand the different time representations python now let's understand the different time representations so in python we have majorly these time representations available one is float date time string tuple or struct time so first let's understand what is this float time representation and to understand this float time representation let's have an understanding what is this epoch time as in unix or windows like systems epoch time is the float time what is this epoch time so epoch time is the number of seconds from 1st january 1970 midnight so that means if the number of if the epoch time is zero that is representing what 1st january 1970 midnight let's see that in the action and all Windows or Unix like operating system underneath utilize this epoch time to calculate different time calculation. And I hope you have a idea what is this UTC time. If you don't get that, then please watch my video about time zone aware time. And I have given all the important videos link in this video description or video resources let's see that and understand what is this epoch time so if epoch time is zero so what is this zero is representing this time first january 1970 now let's now convert this epoch time zero or this float time zero into a date time representation because understanding a daytime representation is much more easy for a human and for, for a machine. Understanding a epoch time or float time is much more easy for a machine. So that's the reason machine calculates these epoch time and then they give you or convert those epoch times in different other time representations. So now let's convert this epoch time in a daytime representation and daytime representation is not available in the time module so for that we need to import date time class from date time or module so for let's import date time class from date time module and convert this flow time representation into a date time representation for that in date time class we have a function utc from time is time and then enter this epoch time and right now as this epoch time is zero so for the simplicity i'm entering directly zero instead of this variable so now this zero epoch time of float time is what first january 1970 and so let's run this we got this value in a date time representation and date time class is having two different representation one is repr and another one is str as if you are using a jupyter notebook and returning a value directly that returns a repr representation but a repr representation is not a very good readable representation either you could use a print function to convert it or get a value 
with a str representation or use directly a str function let's a str function and get their representation in a str representation and if you want to know about str and repr representation again check my video description or video resources where i have given a video which explain about str and repr representations now you know what's happening now we are converting this float time in a date time representation so float time zero means 1970 1st january midnight now think about how you will refer a second january midnight so for that what should be the float time as float time is what a offset in seconds from that this time so let's make a one day offset in seconds let's say one day time and what is the one day time 60 into 60 that's and 24 let's print one day and now let's see what we will get we will copy this whole and now instead of zero added this one day epic time we got a what second january right so that's what we required to get because we made it a one day offset and one day offset is how many seconds are there in one day 86,400 so 86,400 is representing 2nd January midnight time if you will add the one add the one hour that is also easy let's add one hour in seconds 60 into 60 and you will get what now we have got one hour time back right so that's how you could understand these time representations and now instead of now and remember this utc time stamp is giving us a utc time and if you want to know your local time so for that we have a different function available in date time module that function is from time stamp so let's use that function let's use date time and from time stamp and use one day thus 60 into 60 let's see that what are we getting back we are getting back a let me do one thing let me the 60 so you could see what is my offset of from the UT set time of my time zone so my time zone is offset about how many let me make it str represent yeah now it is better so you could see now my as my time offset is 5 over 30 seconds that's the reason i'm getting this time and whenever you are doing a calculation with from time stamp don't make it a negative numbers argument otherwise you will get an error as it accepts only positive numbers so if you will mention instead of zero instead of one day or this 86400 so you will get what it is a parenthesis typing mistake you are getting 1971st january plus or minus offset whatever the time zone you are into but if your time zone is into a negative time zone then you might get an error if you are doing this so please add those number of seconds so at least add these 86400 then you will get a right answer
so now there's one more thing if you want to convert this time zone or if you have a let's say date time and if you want to see a float time again you uh, let's create a date time in a date time format let's create this date 2nd january sorry 2nd february first hour second minute some seconds two seconds so let's print date this is the date and now i want to see this time in a float time for that i have a formula a date time that's the time stamp and with this function we can see the float time of this date time representation now i hope you have a clarity about what is this float time now let's see and understand how can we convert this float time into a string time formats then we have a string representation and a string representations i will ju just show you a small glimpse of it and then a string representation of time we will cover up in a separate video because that is a very important thing and you will utilize in your whole coding career a lot so for that we have a two very important function strp and another one is strf function and how to utilize those functionality i'll show you in that video which talks about date time string formatting and date time in strings and link of that video i have attached with this video in description or resources which you can check that and now let's see about the idea like what happens so let's say we have this c time available time the c time and it gives us a current time back and if you want to see some time let's say this value back in a with the c time so what we need to do apply we need to mention the float time as a value as it takes by default time dot time value that that means the current number of floats as by default arguments to you as it takes by default so you don't need to put it but if you want to see some specific time so for that first you need to get that time in a float back so as i want to see this value in float time and i want to see thing representation Now you could see that Sunday, Feb, January. Now we have this time in a string time representation. So I'm not going to talk about much over here as that for that the separate video. And please watch that video because though that concept is a very important concept. And now just talk about the other time representation that is a tuple or struct time representation we have a time tuple with these parameters and day of the week will be zero will be monday and six will be sunday and daylight saving time will be having three values either one if the daylight saving time is there zero if there is a standard time and minus one if the daylight saving time is unknown so let's see that how do we utilize that or let's see that how we get the struct time or a time tuple first let's say if you want to know your local time in a time tuple so for that we have a function time dot local time will give us a local time back and you can get the specific values also back the different properties so let's say i want to get back what is the current hour i could directly get game hour property i'll get 18 back that's the current any properties we could could get with these properties the other different properties and all these properties the dates with that time tuple yes here tm month and let and the last one this tm itdst is zero 
last one is the daylight saving time zero that is the standard time and pm by day what is what is that day of the year that's for the day of the year day of the week that is the two and what is the so two means zero is sunday for one it will be monday two is tuesday that's the reason we got that now and to know about the current utc time we have a different formula gmt gm time with this we can know the utc time in a strict time format and if we will make it and is all local time and gmt time is taking time dot time that means local time in float float by default as a value let's say it will give a value that is zero float seconds so what will will get let's give the zero we got that standard time first january 1970 midnight value back 1970 what is this month this is the day these are the all the values are the zero and big day is three that means sunday monday tuesday that is the wednesday and day of the week is the one so day of the year is the one that value we got if we make it zero and let's see what happens if we will give the local time a zero value it will give that 1970 value plus or minus whatever your time zone is offset from the utc time as my time zone is 5 and 30 hours ahead so it has added those tm hour and tm minutes over here and whatever the time you will mention so let's say we took that float value with that time this float flow as this 2nd february 2020 this time we got in a time if you mention take this float time i mentioned so again you will get that time back also let's put any value put time we get as this flow time represents this time same way if we'll put the gmt time we'll get that back and the other important function which is available is oh let's see let's make what is the time tuple so time tuple is so let's understand what is this struct time. So as this time presentation is a time tuple or struct time, and we can mention a time tuple with all these value. It will enter these values back. So this value should be with that time tuple, and this is the time tuple. We'll mention all these values. The time tuple we will get this time back in a format. Thirty-one, seven, five, hour is eighteen, fifty-four, second is six. Day of the day six and the time done it. We got this the time back as this is a time tuple, we call it. And with the local time, we have a function time or time function m tm gmt of with this function we can know what is the, the your time zone offset from the utc time as my zone time zone offset is 5 hour 30 seconds so i got this value we'll convert this value the 
hours it will get 5 hour 30 like minute back so let's do that Sixty, and this so we got a five and a half hour back. And we can have one more function find in full time that is a function. Can you know about the TM zone function which will give us the current? What is your current time zone or your local time zone and add an important function we could find that that if you wanna let's say convert your local time into a in time format for that also we have a function time dot local time for that we have a function ASC time so time dot ASC time and it will convert your lo local time or struct time I mean in a time format or that ISO timestamp and if you wanna convert your local time in again float time back for that you have a mk time function for that uh, you'll get, you'll get a float time back with this mk time so I hope that whole lecture gives you a, a whole clarity about different time representation and important functions that are available the time module and for more details about the string time please watch that video there in the video description or the video resources and make sure you have a proper understanding of this epoch time And please watch my video if I know about more time which is based on the date time format and that as that video makes really clear about thought about date time because date time module is widely used to work with the time calculation more than this time module and watch and check this file which I have created where all the important functions I have made it for here and these two files which I have just ran and this particular file link I have given with the video description or video resource download that also thank you guys bye bye so thanks guys for watching this video and please provide a positive feedback in the comment section and let me know in the comments if you want me to create a new video on any specific topic if you have learned something new please like the channel video and subscribe this channel as there will be some new video releases every week and this will be a huge support for me